This illusion is called Sanctum. This concept came to me yesterday while I was editing videos, and that takes a while. The concept came with the name as well as the visual, which is very unusual to me. I've just been so fortunate to keep coming up with these poses, although I softened the concept when I redrew it on the canvas paper, so it's not exactly true to what I envisioned. What I envisioned was sharper and a more acute of a bend within the body, but I think that change is for the best in terms of what I can execute. The figure is headless. It folds on itself, unsteady, sentient. It reaches for nothing within its gaping torso. Alternatively, the figure is helpless to the body's whims. The body wants more than what the mind of the figure can give. The body is hungry and quakes. Having brought the figure to a halt, temporarily, from near exhaustion, it forces the sentience to be present all throughout and experience things as they are. The mind and the body feel betrayed by each other, and that's why the cauterized neck is inclined as it is reprimanded by the body. They don't know how to coexist. In turn, they feel trapped together. Just a little breakdown for you. As it turns out, I consume a lot of historical content. In another life, I think I might have been a historian, if not an anthropologist. And that's a sensible thing to say because there is an overlay. Forensic anthropology probably has, slash had, at the time I was trying to attend college, a very narrow job outlook since it's niche. And, you know, not to copy a fictional character, although A Nell's Ghost was a very deeply moving book for me. An eye-opener. One of my horcruxes if I was, like, Voldemort. Um, it's probably not unlike forensic psychology and that because I was like when I researched forensic psychology job outlook it's a very very narrow field my sister once suggested I be a librarian but I'll out myself and say I never understood the Dewey Decimal System that's the one time in school I cheated it and copied other people's papers I put the Dewey Decimal System right there with addresses did you know they don't go in order you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. I mean, when you're in the car and other people are driving, you're not thinking about how you're going to get there, you know? It was very jarring for me when I started driving. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? How do people go places? That time of phone books? You want me to use a map? Am I a bird? North, south, east, west? I don't know that shit. No. Even now, I need landmarks. And I also need to know the route. Like, I need to have gone it a dozen times without stress. As it turns out, Cortisol really affects the memory. I think maybe that might be one of the reasons I have a bad memory. I'm not really sure. There was a video by Team History about a mixed-race woman whose remains they uncovered in Roman Britain. They could tell she was mixed-race based off her bones, which made me think. Zora Neale Hurston. I've decided she's sort of like my fairy grandmother. Yes, yes, my literary fairy grandmother. She stopped people on the street and measured their skulls. It was said in a documentary... And that type of thing likely contributes to how scientists are able to do such a thing. And it reminded me of a video from Absolute History, another YouTube channel, that I remember like yesterday, albeit when I <laughs> went on a very, very deep dive. It turned out it was published two years ago. The video was about Herculaneum, the town destroyed by a volcano. I think it was before Pompeii. And they had evidence from that era so well preserved. Part of the video covered the documentation of a free Assyrian slave who married, most likely a Greek woman. People really got around. I don't know my history that far back, but I know my people got around. What would they say about my bones, I wonder? My paternal grandfather was Chinese. Would that show up from my bones? I am small in stature. I don't know if that's a distinctly Asian trait. There are people in my family shorter than me, though, so I'm not the smallest. Anyway, the intrigue, the intrigue, you know? I'm so curious about being alive in a time like that. Mostly I'd like to see about the Alexandria city, you know, the booming metropolis. Sure as a woman, the knowledge would be held from me, which would, ooh, God, that would really have to dress up like a man. Besides that, when I feel not dramatic, fanciful, I, I like to imagine being a humble artisan in ancient times.
just making papyrus paper for the grades, then, you know, none of this would matter. Some people wonder about being cats, and let me tell you, I've been there as a child. I pretended to be a cat many a time. I was a Dr. Pepper cat, and I would meow. I was around cats a lot, and I was alone a lot as well. Even now, I'm alone a lot. Um, and it was easy because my man had cats, Toulouse and Sebastian. Granted, Sebastian was not hers originally. That's how you steal a cat from a neighbor. Anyway, <laughs> they say cities in that time were diverse, although I expect there was probably still a sort of racism um, Greeks in particular were cited for being elitist, especially to their Roman counterparts, and it's like, you guys were all doing the same thing. You guys copied each other, you got stuff passed around, the knowledge, the knowledge was being spread. I know partly there was racism in a way, maybe it would not be considered overt racism, it was probably more of like microaggressions, but it depends on how you feel about body mutilation. And this is not specific to the Alexandra time period, but I researched eunuchs for a book I was working on, and the darker complected men were more extremely mutilated than the lighter European ones who were left with partial organs. Look up, uh, look up eunuchs if you don't know what I'm referring to when I say organs. Um, but it's odd the competition between them when it's clear they were both influenced by Indians. The country India, you know, especially architecturally, in my opinion. And intellectually, it was India and the Middle East that contributed a lot to Greeks' advancement. Yeah, Greeks. Because I was like, Greeks had this stuff first. I had to think about it for a minute. I took a whole class about it in history. Yeah, a college course. I came out of class with an A, despite the way that professor spoke to me. And she also... She also had some... Oh, I don't know that you should be teaching history if you have stances about the Black Plague, where the Jewish people's murders were justified. That's a red flag, isn't it? And she really went at me. She really did. She's like, oh, because there was a girl who said it was hysteria. And I'm like, no, no, no. That was plotted. That was plotted. And they said that the Black Plague wasn't even caused by poison in the water. That's not how the Black Plague would spread. But no, that was, she really came at me. And even in the textbook, it said they were being used as scapegoats. But the professor came to defend the girl saying it was hysteria. And I was like, you probably think a lynch mob is hysteria too. I reported her. I did not like that woman. Really, though. I came out of class with, hey, the way she spoke to me. Ugh. Ugh. And when I was in high school, well, before I attended high school, history was the one AP class I almost got into. If I hadn't dropped out, I would have been in that class soaking up the knowledge i don't like crotchety people that professor she was something she was a c word let me tell you anyway if you take anything away from this video it is art truly art and art goes on so i will in my next video